today we have with us Mr. Yui Banks and we will speak to him about his Kolkata connection. So, welcome to sholuanabangaliana.com. Uh, so, sir, uh, back to Kolkata. So, let's talk about your Kolkata connection. How how has Kolkata influenced you and how deeply is it rooted in you? Well, I think uh, uh, my whole musical journey, the most significant part of my musical journey happened in Calcutta. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm taking you back 40 years. 40 years, okay. Where I was offered to form a band here in Calcutta. And that's how I came here. And that's how my journey, the musical journey in Calcutta began. So which band did you uh, I just came on a proposition by the owner of uh, Hindustan Hotel, okay. Mr. Jaiswal. Mm -hmm. I was at the time I was in Nepal, Kathmandu, mm -hmm. playing at the Solti Hotel, okay. and he had heard about me mm -hmm. because uh, there are a lot of artists that used to come to Kathmandu to perform during Christmas and New Year's. Okay. And they spoke about me to him, I guess. That's how he came to know and then he offered me, he said, we have a band over here, a ready band. All we need is a leader. I think you'll be perfect for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm offering you. Okay. And it sounded exciting for me to venture out from Nepal. Mm -hmm. Nothing really great was happening in Nepal at the time. Mm -hmm. And I came and led this band that was already in existence okay. and that was the beginning, the start of my experience in Calcutta. Mm -hmm. uh, that went on for a year or so where then I got motivated to form a group of my own with my choice of musicians mm -hmm. and I formed the Louis Banks Brotherhood. Okay. And I got an offer to come to Blue Fox mm -hmm. at the time. And that's where it all really began for me. Uh, uh, I started getting pop becoming popular uh, because the band was really good mm -hmm. and we played some exciting stuff. And uh, we had a great audience that used to flock every night, pack the place. Okay. And uh, we had some great time. I had some great musicians in the form of Pam Crane, Braz Gonzalez, Johnny Edmund, Peter Saldana, Carlton Kito. I mean, all the top, top jazz musicians of this country. And we just made some great music at the time. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. And so that went on and I guess my popularity as a pianist mm -hmm. grew mm -hmm. and I began to start writing my own stuff also mm -hmm. at the time. I started I got inspired by the band and I started writing stuff. Mm -hmm. Well that went on. Mm -hmm. But that was one phase of my life. Mm -hmm. And in 79 that changed. Okay. Uh, so that I call it a turning point in my life. 79. Uh, okay. Just before 79, a year before 79, a gentleman came into the Fox mm -hmm. and heard me play mm -hmm. and invited me to his table and introduced himself as R.D. Berman. Oh, wow. <laughs> of course, I didn't have a clue. Okay. Because I was not in that into world. Into that I was world. in my own world. Indeed. And but they told me that he was a very famous music director from Bombay. Mm -hmm. I was happy to meet him. He was a great guy, actually. He, he quickly said, I like what you play. I like your piano playing and all that. I want to make you an offer. Come and play for one of my films. I said, I don't know anything about films. I never play film music. I said, don't worry. You just come and play piano. That's all you have to do, play piano. So I said, okay. So I came to Bombay, I played for that film, film called Mukti. Oh, Mukti. I played all the piano pieces. Okay. And then, 
said, why don't you stay back? I think we need we need a person like you over here. I said I cannot because I have to get back to capital. I have a band over there. The band calling was stronger <laughs> yes. than Bollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you see, change your mind. Offer is open. Okay. So I came back. In 79, this working power situation in Calcutta deteriorated. Right. They started switching off the lights mm -hmm. every night. Park Street was in darkness every night. So what? Our job was it became shaky then. And the manager was saying, "All right, we're losing customers. Absolutely. Band is. We're standing outside on the street." Chatting and all that because we couldn't do anything. Yeah, obviously without yeah, the electricity. Yeah, with the city. Yeah. So, and then the panel said, no, God, it's like, they can just keep on paying the band and get nothing out of nothing it. Nothing out of it, indeed. So, before he could hire me and <laughs> my band, I said, I'll be Okay. And I told my wife, I have to make a change now. And the best thing is, I go to Bombay. The offer was always open. RD Berman. Indeed. I didn't know it was uh, still open. Okay, okay. I came to Bombay mm -hmm. and went straight to him. I said, Here I am. I'm ready to join you. See. The offer is still open. It's Fantastic. It's a great to actually. Great. And one of those few that who didn't have a struggle to get into Bollywood. One, one of them. Okay. So that that then my film career began at that time. Okay. My jazz career took a little back seat, but it was always there. I mean, it was my forte with jazz, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I kept that going. But I started doing this because it was very lucrative Indeed. for one. Yeah, and. Wife was very happy. A lot of money was coming in <laughs> all the time. The commercials were looking fine, yeah, indeed. <laughs> what I earned in one month, I was earning in one day. Uh -huh. He was like, so she was like, ooh, a lot of shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and that too with the glamour of uh, the <laughs> yeah, Mumbai film industry. She was mom from that time. I was very much part of the Ali Berman team. Okay. And uh, whatever music you, whatever piano mm -hmm. you. Heard after '79 in an R.D. Burman film was all played by me. Wow! Uh, yeah. That's fantastic. Because whenever there was a piano solo, he was always saying, "Louis, you have to play this." So uh, I became one of his favorites and was part of the inner circle also. And his inner team. So good. your favorite of R.D. Burman? You've played so many. Which oh one God. was your favorite? Oh God, I don't know. Can't uh, really pick and choose. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Uh, the songs from Love Story, uh, Mukti, of course, definitely. Mm -hmm. That was your first. That's yeah, right. and there's so many parts. Okay, so in Kolkata, uh, tell me something about your mischievous uh, stay of Kolkata. Mischievous? You, yeah. What do you mean? I mean, I couldn't be mischievous. I had a wife. Oh no! Don't say that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, indeed. I mean, uh, exploring the other nooks and crannies of Kolkata. Tell me some experience around that. Uh, my life revolved around Park Street, mm -hmm. and we were staying in Elliot Road. Mm -hmm. So, like between Park Street, Elliot Road, Griffin Street, mm -hmm. Charangi. We used to go to Grand Hotel sometimes okay, okay. and Hindustan Hotel to catch another band. That was the area that I was familiar with in Calcutta. Okay. Beyond that, I didn't know what was happening in Calcutta. <laughs> she was so engrossed into your music. You I was so engrossed in my music. In no, music. absolutely. All right. Great. I'm like that in Bombay also. Okay. So, uh, Bengali music, Bengali music, the culture, how has that influenced you? Actually, I haven't capitalized on that yet. Okay. I find the music very uh, melodious, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, somebody suggested that I should do something with Ranga Samji. Exactly, I was just about to say uh, that. But uh, I've been very careful what I do with it because uh, people are, I mean, really, um, it's almost like sacrosanct. Mm. His music is like, I mean, whatever I do, it has to enhance his compositions and not distort it at all. 
Yeah. So I have to be very careful, and, but I might attempt it. Okay, you don't yet have any plans ready for, for it, but you might. In fact, two years ago, uh -huh. it almost happened okay. because there was a sponsor who really wanted to take it forward, mm -hmm. but it got. Oh, okay. These so are your future projects. If you could tell us, you know, briefly about them, where all can we hear you? Oh, uh, I know. Well, you can hear me tonight mm -hmm. at Calcutta Club, <laughs> Calcutta Club, <coughs> playing with my Matrix Trio, okay. which is Gino Banks, mm -hmm. Sun okay. on drums. Mm -hmm. And Sheldon De Silva on bass, okay. and we are featuring Don Saigal mm -hmm. as a singer. But tonight we are doing retro music, right. R&B music, mm -hmm. bringing back the sound of the 70s. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So that kind of a concept. Mm -hmm. But my focus today is a fusion music. Fusion music. Yeah, I do a lot of that because I find the youngsters have a difficult time to relate to jazz in its traditional forms because they were never, never exposed to it. Mm -hmm. They were not born at that time. Yeah, indeed. So, for them to understand jazz and relate to jazz, it has to be sort of So do you have any favorites in terms of the young musicians? A favorite, if, if you can name? My son Gino. Okay. And this guy who is playing bass. Okay. And in Bombay, uh, over here, I like Amit Bhatt very much. Okay. Sumit right. on guitar, mm -hmm. terrific. Yeah, opinion of Bikram Ghosh. Bikram Ghosh, I've yeah. played with him. You played with Great him? Great percussionist, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in Calcutta. <coughs> And there's a, there are a lot of rock bands coming up, Bangla rock bands coming up. I believe so. Yeah. So any, are you associated with any no. of them? Are you looking no. in, you know, no. looking not. at them closely? No. My son would be familiar with them, but okay. not me. Yeah. All right. Is it by choice that you're not familiar, or? No, actually, is that I, I'm it not exposed happen. to it. Yeah. Okay. I need to hear the music. Yeah. But yeah. I've heard that mm -hmm. they're very good. Yeah. Uh, some popular bands like Fossils and all, they're doing great work, and they're like really popular. I believe popular. so, but I haven't heard them yet. You haven't heard no, them yet. Oh. I must. I must make it they are really doing a great job. Yeah, they are quite great. popular. Quite yeah, popular. Great. Yeah. great. So, sir, uh, what exactly are you doing from your end in order to encourage the young budding musicians? Any uh, well now activities? I'm activities. I am recording a lot of albums. Okay. I want to leave these albums behind. Mm -hmm. The CD market is down. Yeah. So we are just recording, printing mm -hmm. and giving away to okay. people. <laughs> Listen. Memorable. Just yeah. Yes. Spread the music. Spread, you know, spread the music. That's definitely a thought. And I'm performing a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have So uh, you're like auditioning have, a lot so of people? <laughs> and and my home is like open to musicians. Yeah. My Gino's friends always come over. It's like open house for music. We have a studio and they are always coming in, rehearsing and all that, so I get to meet a lot of very talented young sisters. I know a lot of talented young sisters in Bombay. Anything that, that you particularly don't like about the generation today, their uh, I mean, uh, perception of music? Anything in particular that you might want to change, given the chance? Uh, sometimes I don't find it uh, find kind of seriousness okay. and uh, dedication and focus mm -hmm. in the in the challenging aspect of music. Do you think they're doing music for the sake of the glamour and not for the sake of music, music as such? Some of them are doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So I always advise them, uh, don't be satisfied with what you're doing, of course, and always try to better yourself. Take up challenging mm -hmm. uh, music to play so that it improves your, and uh, listen to good music, definitely. That's the goal. And yeah. Mm -hmm. 80% of it comes from listening to good yeah, music and 20% and is from the guru. There's more to Bollywood. Absolutely. There's more to Bollywood music, there's more to pop music. Yeah. And uh, you should really get into jazz <laughs> because that is the BL, be all and end all of music. But once you have that under your belt, you can play any music and enhance it. Perfect. Thank you so much for talking to us today, sir. Lovely. You have a wonderful Lovely, meet Lovely, meeting. Lovely meeting. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Mumbai, before that, he called me, of course, and then he spoke about this idea of his of uh, writing a song for Park Street and sort of bringing back the glory of Park Street as an entertainment.
which was there and which I was very part, very much part of it. Uh, it was during the 70s. That whole decade of the 70s, Park Street, I call it the golden era of Park Street. As far as the entertainment went, it was absolutely glorious. Every evening, Park Street reverberated with the sound of music and song and dance. It was so lively and entertaining. People everywhere coming to listen to different bands. Uh, that scene after the 70s slowly, slowly faded away. Really. Too many, many factors. Yeah. And now we need a resurgence. Bring back those days. Yeah. To the sound of jazz. I'm calling it jazz because jazz today is not specific American. It's universal. Sound of jazz is everywhere. Even in the folk music of Rajasthan, you can hear the sound of jazz. Because jazz, in one word, is, is freedom in music. So we want to bring that back. And I am very happy to be part of the Sparks initiative to be able to project this and motivate people, the young people of today, and to bring back the sound of jazz and music and entertainment, dance, song into Park Street. In short, that's the whole concept. Yeah. Street, it's always a pleasure and honor to be associated anyway with Park Street. Uh, he was talking about the 70s golden era of Park Street, though I have not seen that, but I have heard a lot about it, and I really miss that era. But anyway, the thing which I have seen in Park Street is a memorable one for us. And so it's always a pleasure to uh, associate with Park Street or anything uh, related to that. And the next uh, uh, surprising and uh, pleasurable fact which came to my way was his music. Uh, when I heard that he's doing the, he's composing and he's designing the whole song and all, I was really, really excited to work with him, though we have never met before while doing the song. But yeah. Uh, all this uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, while jumping, while recording, we never met. But huh, uh, the, the the simple fact that he was composing was a big enough reason for me to be happy more to be associated with this song. I know that's true. That's true. Uh, and I was uh, really, really looking forward to this day uh, when I can meet him. And overall, I would also like to add uh, the songwriter here has beautifully penned down certain uh, simple quite a uh, he has written very beautifully so I would definitely uh, would like to congratulate uh, the Spark team of course and all the members associated yes and all the members associated with this song and with this whole entire idea thank you